It's my pleasure to welcome Alfred Noel from the University of Massachusetts at Boston, who will speak to us today on Molien series and a recent theorem of constant. Thank you very much, and, uh, and thank you for the invitation. I, I should have been here earlier, but uh, for some strange reason, I, I didn't make it. So also, it, it, uh, I'm very glad it's like back in graduate school because I see a lot of faces from my days at Northeastern. So what, what, I, what I'd like to talk about today is joint work with Stephen Jackson that actually has been published. But now we're trying to develop it further because we have a, a, a postdoc from, um, from Czechoslovak, oh, Czech Republic, because who is, who is working with us and uh, who is quite good at, uh, at doing things on computers. So that, that's helping us. Um, so I was told that I should not expect everybody here to be um, a representation theorist. So I should at least define some of the terms that I'm going to be uh, to use. Uh, the, uh, the other problem is that <laughs> whenever you're in a situation like that, you, you want to not to use a lot of the technical uh, terms. So I want you to just develop a feeling for, for, for the definitions. Although if you are very picky, then uh, we'll have to, to, do, to, to, to perhaps use the board to talk more. I may not do that, though, so it's possible. So the outline of the talk is that I, I'll, I'll mention constant recent result, uh, and then um, then I'll I'll talk about some new theoretical result. Well, new. Well, it depends on how you how you think of it. And uh, and I'll talk about the algorithms. Uh, there, actually, there'll be several algorithms, and um, and then I'll give some examples. Uh, those examples actually turn out to be significant because they were not they were not able to be computed before. So, so I'll, I'll I'll start with some preliminaries. So, you, you you well a reductive group you can think of a group of invertible matrices on on um, on the complex. So, a representation is basically on a complex Hilbert space V, and uh, we are thinking in terms of the group of bounded linear operators, and we require that such a map here be continuous. Now, if, if, if you want to, to if, if V is finite dimensional, you can, you can really think of pi of G as basically a, a, an invertible linear transformation acting on V. And so, so you say that pair pi V some people just use pi. Yeah, it's, unit, it's a unitary representation if, in fact, you have this unitary uh, 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 relation. So whenever you're talking about representation, it's, it's always up to equivalence. So which means that you know, they, they, they could be the same up to some uh, to conjugation by a linear transformation. And unitary representation that are unitarily equivalent requires that A itself be unitary and satisfy these conditions. So you, I, I talk about unitarity because that's basically the one that we are that are, that, that that are of interest to to to, to at least the representation theory community. And of course, we want to look at what they call irreducible representation. Those are the ones for which only the, you know, there is no proper and, uh, invariant subspace. Now, this is broadly speaking. So there are actually, for the cases that are, we have of interest to us, and I think it's quite broad, there are theorems that guarantee that, you know, if you are given this kind of representation, you cannot break it into uh, irreducible pieces. Uh, now, there are many ways you can do that, and I'm not going to say too much about that. So, well, suffice to say that you, you, you simply want to, to look at irreducible representation, and in our case, irreducible unitary representation.
So to, to, to basically give you an idea, if you, many people are, uh, are familiar with uh, Fourier series. So this is representation basically f from the group S1. And basically, as you can see, the, the group is the translation. You take uh, you know, something of that form. So, you, so the way you act on the function and L2 function, uh, x, so it's f of uh, xg. So, so basically, you take a function and just write it down. So here, the, uni the, the pieces that are unitary are exactly the e i and theta. Right, so this, and uh, and for for engineers, that's something that 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 they use quite a bit. Now, the this, the the summation that you see here comes from the fact that uh, you're working on the compact group. Um, oh, if you take it on R, so you end up with Fourier transform, and in this space you see you have a continuous kind of decomposition. So you give that. now. I, 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 well, I, I don't want to give you the impression that this kind of representation, they, 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 they break into either uh, you have this kind of discrete piece or a continuous piece. In fact, you, you can have a mixture. And it comes, you know, that's one of the big theorem of uh, the 1940s for SL2. Right. So I wanted you to focus on the fact that uh, uh, the representations that I'm interested in are going to be most, well, I'm not going to talk about the representation. I'm going to tell you why what, um, what, what Stephen and I are doing uh, is important. <laughs> but to, to, in order to tell you that, I have to tell you something about uh, unitary representation. And in this case, as you can, this theorem tells you that uh, the, you know, the, 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 the representation that we are, are going to be interested in, they are all going to be an infinite uh, dimension. So in some sense, uh, you, you have to be working on Hilbert spaces and things like that. You, you no longer have this kind of finite metrical metri type of theory. So I, I wanted also to give you an idea of what's known out there a little bit. For compact group, this is problem of finding the set of, you know, the, the collection of all irreducible unitary representation is basically known. Um, but uh, for, for non-compact uh, groups, they, it's a different matter. I mean, they, they, as you, you all know, that there have been a lot of work over the last 40 years, uh, or 50, to say. And a lot have been known, but at the same time, we have a lot of uh, cases. Oh, we have a lot of cases that we certainly uh, we don't have. We don't know too much about. So here, uh, all those names are quite familiar to, to us. What you do is that you try to go from this real group, try to move the problem into looking at representation of a maximal compact group. As I explained earlier, well, I didn't explain it, but as I said earlier, the, for compact group, the irreducible representation and unitary or the unitary dual is well understood. But it turns out that's not such a simple matter. So, so, so whenever, you, well, I mean, the tool that you use is what they call the GK module, which is basically kind of a vector space that, and here you are working with the complexification of the, of the algebra, and what you want, you want the one that have finite multiplicities as representation. What I didn't say today, what I did just say earlier is that when you break the representation, uh, there is no reason to expect you know, one irreducible not to repeat itself infinitely many times. That's possible to have that. 
And when that happens, there isn't that much you can do. So I myself, I'm involved in two kind of in two uh, I would say groups that are in, that are trying to do some work in, along the line of uh, computing the unitary dual. One of them is they call uh, the Atlas of League Group and Representation. And um, what really is being done right now, and specifically by those about five people, is to try to come up with an algorithm that can write down the unitary dual for the so-called split form of E8. And uh, I have managed to get some funding, and I'll be organizing a conference in, at the University of Massachusetts in July. And Vaughan will be there as kind of uh, the, the main speaker. And we will have about you know, 10 other speakers. And everything will be done kind of from the beginning, you know, Harish Chandra, and even earlier than that, all the way to a possible algorithm uh, that's, that is being implemented by Mark Van Leuven in, at Poitiers that might give us some, some answer. But, but my talk will be related to a second, well, to an older uh, point of view. Uh, certainly, uh, Costant is one of the proponents of this. Uh, is the idea of looking at the action of the centralizer of K in the universal enveloping algebra on K primary component. What I mean by that is that the irreducible pieces that are the same, you know, just lump them together and that gives you. It turns out, now, I don't want to be too technical here. For finite, for finite group representation, you can see clearly how that would work. But for infinite group, you, not, you don't always have uh, what I would consider to be a, a, a isotypic decomposition. You have to actually do some work to, to, to achieve that. But in some sense, what you want to have is a, is a unique decomposition of a, of a representation, you know, where you can, you can write it down as unique uh, decomposition in unique pieces. But unicity right now is so totally well defined. It's, it's up to. Anyway, so, oh, so this is the philosophy. The philosophy is that this will act as a one-dimensional character. Basically, it's just multiplication by scalar. So if you are able to know on this primary, you need to know all on the generators of this, then you should be able to, to, to generalize everything. Now, <laughs> I have to, I was talking to the King about that. Stephen and I have been trying to carry this computation for SL2 for a year. And uh, we have some ideas, but it's not clean. It's, it's not nice to be able to do that. We did talk to Kostant about it, and his answer is that, well, you need to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my talk will be about how does one go about computing the generators of such, uh, of such objects. So as I said earlier, Vaughan doesn't like it. And, and, he, and, he, and he doesn't hide his, uh, his uh, feeling about it. So, but regardless of uh, Vaughan's feeling, uh, many people have continued to work on it, and uh, including Kostant, whose latest research came in 2007. And, uh, they know how to carry the UGK for those three groups. And that's it. Hogan didn't make that comment in the 70s, did he? Uh, no, no, I think he, he, made, he, he made it in the 1980s. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He could have had. Well, <laughs> he's my age. 
which is very embarrassing. <laughs> For which one? For me. Uh, so here, when I by the carton uh, uh, decomposition, what I what I need what I mean here is something that uh, a lot of you know. For example, if you take a matrix of take a matrix of three zero, you know what we call SLN. You can break it. You know, you can do it into anti-symmetric. Plus a symmetric matrix. So you see here, so this thing, there is this little involution. You know, in this case, I think it will be. So, so therefore, the, the, this one will be kind of the plus one eigenspace, and this one will be the minus one eigenspace. That's basically exactly the same thing here. Um, this is important because the, the group that is associated with uh, K is usually a reductive group, and it tells you quite a bit about G. Now, this is the part where I don't have too much choice. I have to. So, the universal, universal enveloping algebra, you can think of it as basically looking at the space of tensors, and the tensor algebra, and just quotient it by the right ideal, you know, that. To, that to, 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 to get this, but I, it would be too technical. But the point here is that, is that you can break, you know, it, it's broken into those pieces, and uh, those are the span of the J products with elements such that you have G less than or equal to I. So they are, you can think of them as basically polynomials if you want. And in fact, that's the way I think about them. Um, actually, there is a, there is a, famous theorem that tells you that, in fact, for all practical purposes, you can think of this as a symmetric algebra. And then uh, now, because of this, this is isomorphic to the algebra of polynomial function on, on this, uh, on, a, a, on the dual of the algebra. Now, this algebra being reductive, then this one is basically the same. The, those two are more or less uh, isomorphic. So if you can find generators for this, then there is a way you can lift the generator into this one. So it's a lifting process that will take place. And over here, you are working with polynomials of several variables, so you will be able to carry out computation. And then so once you have enough of the generator, then you just lift them. And the lifting is quite straightforward. This is a construction that is fairly well known how to go about doing, doing that. Now, I should also mention that uh, the, 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 the generators that I'm looking for are really have to give me the, the ring structure uh, as a linear vector space that will not be too useful to me. So here is, Vogel, this is, here is a constant theorem. All you have to do, according to constant, is to compute the symmetric power up to R when R is equal to two times the dimension of G, and you know, choose two time dimension of P, and, and you stop. Once you get there, then you get all uh, the key invariant polynomial that you need. So as you can see, this is a very nice theorem. Mathematically, it's very nice, and very, the paper also is very well written. The problem with this is that you can't compute with it. You, you, you can't compute with it. And I can, let me give you an, you know, an idea of what happened with, uh, with Stephen and I when we tried. 
So the naive approach would be to try to carry this out and our computers kept, kept on failing and then we tried to make a computation to see what's going on. And the matrices that we are looking at were, would be of that size, so therefore you can't, you can't go any further. Now, let me say one thing. Is that I'm not saying that perhaps there is no other way that you can do this using constant research and, the, and what he has in his paper, uh, but we were not able to, 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 to do it. Um, and, we, and we did spend a considerable amount of time trying to figure out what, what could be done. But, um, so, what, what, so what did we do? So, uh, so Ham Dexon, so he spent some time at Northeastern. Uh, those guys have been doing a lot of work on computational invariant theory. And uh, they went all the way back to, you know, the, the notice degree bound for invariance of a, uh, finite groups, and they have a techniques that somehow give you an idea how you can speed up that algorithm. Because one of the things that I should say, I consider this, the work that I'm explaining here to be really <laughs> software development. <laughs> I, mean, you see, I see it as, as a way of speeding algorithms in order to carry out computation. So the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is that you will see that everything that we try to do is to somehow come up with an algorithm that we can implement on a computer in what we would consider a, a reasonable amount of time, so but that we can discuss later. But the philosophy of the paper is really from, this, from that one. Now, in some sense, Colston had solved that problem in 1959 or 61. Well, you, you need to do a little bit of work, but we get a lot of information from a very old paper. And out of that, we were able to work out this isomorphism. Now, you, you could say, well, okay. Uh, it's not clear that you can, because this is kind of a, this is not really an algebra isomorphism, so you should not expect to be able to do the lifting. What I have not told you, and I probably will not, is that within the construction of those things, there are some very big ideals, and those ideals somehow control what's going on, and you, you, and you would be able to lift things up. So, as I said, this, paper, if, this is 1971, not uh, 61, 71 paper of Costant and Rallis. And, uh, and as you see, um, we use a lot of it. You know, so in some sense, uh, if you read it very carefully, you could have found out how to go about those. But you, you do have to have that philosophy that, uh, that Dexon and Kemper uh, kind of uh, started. So the, we have some help here. Remember that uh, this, the, we had four pieces, well, three pieces actually. Now, for the invariant of k in, the, in uh, polynomial uh, you know, k and p, those are known. Now, I put Goodman and Wallach here. It's not because they are the originator of it. It's because they have a book in which everything is written extremely nice. And you can just take them from there. So, so, so the rest is what we need to do. That's where our problem really is. So we need to figure out how to get generators for that. And that's what I will explain. This is the first theorem. And I have a story about this. When we first worked on this, we thought that we have an injection. And then we are discussing with, with Bert Costant. And he mentioned, oh, yeah, this is a very nice isomorphism. And uh, Steven said, what isomorphism? And Costant said, ah, well, you don't call it isomorphism, I do. 
And then we realized that he was right. Uh, you know, it was it wasn't. So he, he 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 was able to very quickly realize it was an isomorphism, and in fact, it's crucial. Now, I have to mention one thing here. This this object here is certainly not well understood because the centralizer of E in the group K is you know that that group over here is not a, a reductive group. The way it decomposes, so 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 this this it decomposes into a very okay. There it, this it has a reductive part, which come from you know the SL two triple in which E is a is the nilpotent, and then there is a unipotent part over here. And uh, so and and the theory of non-reductive group. The invariant theory of non-reductive group is basically non-existent. People don't know how to deal with that. Now, what you will see is that we have a way of circumventing that problem, and and we are able to to find uh, uh, the a uh, nice uh, set of uh, generating function. So. Whenever you have a nilpotent element, for example, think of this as a nilpotent matrix. So let me call it. Let me call it E. Whenever you have something like that, so you can always find another one called you know another one here. Let's see F. So those three things will generate what we call the SL2. This is the set of two by two uh, uh, traceless matrices. Major object in representation theory because in some sense, whenever you pick up a nilpotent element in the, 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 the algebra, that nilpotent element sits inside of, a, of, a, of an SL2 triple, and that SL2 triple tells you a lot about representations of the algebra and so forth. This is the big theorem uh, by, I mean, by constant, constant, and, uh, and Dinkin uh, in the 50s. So it's and it's quite quite important. So because H is a semi-simple element, that means you can take of it as a diagonal matrix. So it breaks this thing into eigenspaces. And the grading that we have here, we can certainly, you know, because of the isomorphism that I we had earlier, you can lift it back to, 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 to A. The next thing is when we start defining the Mollian series. The Mollian series that we define here is quite simple, as you certainly realize. The only problem that we have is that we don't know whether or not this this is finite. There is no reason to, for it to be. Uh, formally, it makes sense, but uh, you want those dimension to be finite in order for this to have um, properties that you can use to do computation with. So, so, so the way the way you want to think about this is that in this decomposition that uh, we have here. So what we call a maximal, maximal toral algebra is basically, uh, you know, a set of uh, 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 I don't say, every element commute. It's kind of an abelian thing. Everything commutes. And, uh, so you take the maximal one. So and you look at its centralizer in K. We call it M. So those of you that may, may have seen this in what they call the Iwasawa decomposition, that's where that M comes from. So computing the Morin so it can be reduced. To, so this is where now computers start. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. So 
what you want to do to compute this, uh, this, this uh, Boolean series is basically you have to compute m n variant on k and some of the Arrhenius configuration. But the reason why this turned out to be good for us is that m is usually a product of finite groups and, uh, and the toes, of course. And uh, well, I mean, you know, kind of z2, z2 groups and stuff like that. And then this, this we know exactly how to do using um, uh, work from uh, invariant theory of finite group, but really a lot of stuff that come out from, uh, from the uh, Duxon and Kemper papers. So here is, so I told you earlier that I had some problem with the dimension of the AI. It turns out that uh, this theorem tells us that we don't have to worry too much because this, this is exactly, so this power, formal power series turned out to, to coincide with the Morgan series. So that tells you, in fact, because those, those are finite. So Goodman and Wallach, as I said earlier, tell us quite a bit of things so that you can look at, you know, homogeneous generators for for the centralizer of K in C. And we define that, uh, that uh, again, this kind of uh, formal power series. Now, remember that I said that M is usually nice. So computing this thing is certainly, is certainly a lot easier. Now M, when M is abelian, so we have analysis tell us that, you know, we, we can do quite a bit now by integration. But in fact, the, the Dexon algorithms works very, very well, but they are all the ad hoc methods that we can use. And usually very quickly we get, we get uh, uh, invariant for, for this, for M than the original K. And that, most of the time, is good enough for us. So, so now, this theorem tells you exactly how to compute MC. So you, once you get P, you evaluate it at T square, and, and you multiply it by this product. Once you have that, so therefore your job is to compute this. Once you have this, you are set. Now, to compute this, this is, this is really just theoretical nonsense to tell you that I can do this thing uh, using, there is a theoretical foundation that tells me that I can integrate over here because there is a measure that I can work. But really, it, we would like to replace that integral by a summation uh, so that you can actually carry out the computation. But once you do that, then P of C will be computed just by evaluating this thing at C's. So when you work in the split group, or the split real group, then in this case, you know for sure that M is not only abelian, but it is isomorphic to a Z2. So the invariance that you have, the so the, 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 this, because of that, the, the integral sign that we have now because of the summation. And also, the xi square, they will be all m invariant because you do it twice, you get it back. So, this is z so, so you can get them out, so you will be interested in the m invariant square monomial of that sort. So that's the basic idea. So now I'd like to go over some examples. So let's look at SLN R. Now this is the set of real of matrices with real entries with trace zero. In this case, as I as I explained over here, the, the K that we talk about will be antisymmetric matrix N by N. So the, there is a coordinate 
a function that I can write down this way, basically the IG entry that you have. And I can define this to give you a basis of k, and then you can see clearly that you have this, uh, this uh, So I just to explain more or less how M generated by the MIG. All right, so diagonal matrix which plus and minus one. So I define this monomial. So there's a graph that will be associated with mu. So it takes vertices v1, vn, and then those, are, those will be the, 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 the token that I use for, for my monomial. And then the dig, really, so, so they are the edges that connect vi to vj. So basically, you can reconstruct mu from the graph. So here, this might take a little bit time to, to see what I mean by that, is that this tells you that mu is square free if and only the graph has no multiple edges, and it is m invariant if and only if the vertex degrees are either all even or all odd. So, so now, in the case of SL3, so you have those three. Those are the only one you're going to get in this case. And in this case, you can compute P of C using the formula that I showed you earlier. And then you get MT just by evaluating at T square and then and then what's going on here is that the piece that you see here is that, remember that when I defined P of C, there was multiplication by another piece of my product. And that product actually killed things down to this cycle. For SL4, you can certainly carry it out the same way. By the way, you realize this was not known, by the way. So, and then we can show that in this case, you can compute P of, P of T this way. In this case, D1 will be equal to 2, and D2 equal to 2, and so that the degrees. And then you have M of T, again, evaluated. This technique, as you certainly see, uh, works for SLN, right? I mean, you just have to create the graphs and then make the computation. Again, I mean, we should not kid ourselves. Uh, <laughs> you know, we can go to SL5. We did that. But by the time we hit SL, SL7, we start having problems. So now, if you know the Mollian theory of MLT, then we can give you an algorithm so you can test whether or not if you have a bunch of K invariants, together with the one that, we, that came from uh, Goldman and Wallach, that you actually have a generator set for uh, CGK. Now, this is a little, it's not technical, but the point here is that this projection that we carry out, in a way we are taking component in K, and we, and we define this, uh, again, this, uh, the same way that we did it earlier, but we did it now for a prime. And then what you do, you check to see whether or not this will give you MT. If it's equal to MT, then you are done. If it is not, then you need to, you need to, to do more. So here the computations use standards, Boberg algorithms, and all this is implemented in Macaulay too, and this is what we use to do this. And it's easy programming at that point. Well, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's not difficult because a lot of the infrastructure is there for you. You just have to define your rings the right way 
so that, so that you know where you are computing. But once you are very careful about that and everything comes along. And those things can be simplified in a way so that the equality can be, can be, can be achieved. If it is there, you will be able to, 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 to determine it fairly easily. So computing. Computing this, oh, yeah, I did start a little bit later, right? Yeah, sorry. Computing these uh, generators, therefore, you have two problems. First, you want to compute MT, which means computing PAT. And then you want to manufacture a large list of, uh, of environment. And then check. That's the basic idea. Find a large list of whichever way you can. And then carry out Q of, Q of T, and then determine whether Q of T is equal to MT. If you can do that, then you know that you have a set of invariant on CK, and then you lift into your GK. So in our case, we have two ways of doing this, of, 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 of getting those generators. There is a nice way, but the nice way is I was laughing with Stephen. It reminded me of constant. But for some strange reason, it seems to work faster, and you don't get to, to deal with a lot of those big matrices. Because you streamline things as you go along, and you do it iteratively. You know, you first for yourself of, hey, it doesn't, it doesn't work. You increment, and you keep on doing it. Now, this requires that, of course, you, computing kernel of matrices and stuff like that. But in fact, but the computation is not that difficult and you can carry it out. And then you have a, pro then you have a program that will tell you whether, or now, I'm lying a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we don't know. We, the complexity of the algorithm, we are not, so we, we have what we call a formal complexity. But my, my own feeling is that since we are using a computer system that we don't know the foundation of, then, 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 <laughs> then we don't know what's fast and what's not fast you know, in some sense. Because the, the elemental, the elemental uh, modules are not within our, you know, we didn't write them. <laughs> and, and in some sense, we can. But it, it seems to behave very well. At least for F from SL5, we are able to actually carry out that computation. So method two will turn out to give you those K invariants a lot faster, but you cannot guarantee, guarantee that it, there will be generators for this. Because what happened, and I will talk about that very quickly, in SP4, the sympathetic uh, uh, the, the, the K can act tracelessly on a G module. But I will explain why that makes sense in a second. And when that happens, because the so-called trace form will be defined in terms of traces of matrices that represent representations. So if you have, you know, <laughs> if you have zero, then there is nothing there for it. And uh, so therefore, that, those are not going to be generators. Uh, you have to find generators some other place. Now, the first method that I told you will always give you a set of generator. But the only problem is that you can't expect it to, to end in a nice way, as I just explained. Uh, so here is what's going on. Choose you know, what I would consider a good uh, representation so that you, uh, of k. And now, the, 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 pi, the pi of ki, you know, whatever they are, you know, those, those representations, you can, you know, finite dimensional, you can take of them as matrices. And in this case, what happened is that since A is a piece of matrices, so we can look at the, compo the, co the composition there, yeah, and we just basically take the, uh, the trace. So it will be, a polynomial of degree D, and the way you construct it, because we are taking, you know, uh, K, K equivalent projections, so you will be sitting inside of a CGK. So you're kind of taking the K piece. 
So let me give you some examples now. Okay. So for SL3, the standard representation, just matrix, matrix multiplication, this is very quickly, it turns out this is what you get as your trace form. And they generate KN, they generate uh, CGK. And in fact, remember that I said that you can break your matrix into two pieces. The, this is the K piece and the P piece. It is the, the uh, anti-symmetric and the symmetric part. And when you leave, this is what you find. So those are the generators for your GK in that case. And you can compute this very easily. Again, compute enough so that you can, comp because you already computed MT, so you can just make the, the, the equality stand, and you are set. For SL4, you were able to do it, and it do. Uh, now, for SU22, now that was uh, one of the, so that was a key result that we needed to test too, because uh, uh, people, the, the unitary dual of SU22 is known, but not by using that method, and it is a mess. And we are trying to see if we could actually compute the unitary dual using what we have, and we fell. We are not able to do it. Anyway. So, in this case, we can compute M of T. If you break again the standard representation, it's decomposed like this into block of two by two matrices. And, uh, The projections are exactly this. And you get those trace form. And here you get those generators. Now, this agrees with Zhu's result. Uh, well, I mean, you just have to read things in different order. But if you do, then you find out that you have exactly those. Now, for, so, so this case is for the exceptional uh, the group. So this is a simple case for G2, G2. Now, I am going to use language that are quite, uh, that will be part of the, so here, I, here you need to know some Lie group and Lie theory. Um, I, I don't, well, I, yeah, I, I think for this audience, it has may not be appropriate, but, uh, but all those things, K and P, all those things make sense in here. And you can compute MT again. And uh, now the, uh, there is a K decomposition of G into a reducible module of that form. And now this is basically coming out from uh, looking at, when I computed it, I used information from uh, Fulton and Harris in order to get an embedding of this into SO7 because I needed matrices. And that's where you find them. And then that's what you get from the generators. Now, when you start seeing things like that, you start telling to yourself that, you know, perhaps Vaughan was right. <laughs> I mean, uh, so, so, so the question is that, is that, can you find out any structure in this? And we spent quite a bit of time trying to understand this in a way so that you can say something that is, at least that you can see something in G2. You can say something, this is how you get things done. We have no idea. Now, there may be many reasons for that. Uh, maybe not, our approach may not be the right one um, because we're using a lot of, you know, really algebraic geometry in some sense, um, but uh, the structure of the group is secondary in some, you know, I mean, when, when you do an application, you use the structure of the group, but, uh, but we are missing something. And so this is what we are working on, on right now, but there is a clue. Now in SLN, for those of you that are, when I did the case of SLN and I write down that graph, I was really playing with the root system. 
And I cannot do everything in terms of food systems. And it's completely general. But however, when we went further into the computation, we found out that we need to prove some theorems uh, that about some cascade descendings and ascending cascades. And we wanted those things to behave in an ass way. In one sense, they do. But when you go in the others, <laughs> they don't. And I, I talked to Michael Arten about that. And his answer was that, well, of course it will work in this, in this way. And I said, OK, but we know that. What about the other way? And he said, oh, well, probably it's not true. It seems to me that there, is, there might be some problem that prevent us from. from. But my, what we are hoping is to have a generic theory. To which extent we can get there, I don't know. You, you, you are not going to be able to do every, anything with things like this, unless you can find enough structure uh, to prove a theorem. It's not there yet. However, what it does give you is, is a way of thinking about uh, those, uh, those, uh, those objects, which, I mean, there is a way you can realize them uh, using computational techniques, but to what extent you can come up with, con if a, with a conceptual point of view, uh, that seems to be rather difficult. So to finish, I want to say that uh, Todor Milev um, is, is visiting, us, visiting us right now. And he, he has done a lot of work uh, in, in realizing those, 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 those representations. And, uh, and uh, before I thank you, I wanted to at least to show you uh, this, this, um, So this representation of G2 that I just, mentioned, yeah, I just uh, told you about is actually, you know, you can realize, yep, can be realized. Now, it gives you about four matrices. The other pieces will come by just uh, 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 taking, taking brackets. So, so he has a kind of a nice software. So if you are doing computational work and you are interested in computing examples, then this sort of thing turns out to be very helpful to you. Because at least you get matrices and you can compute. So I will certainly stop here. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, um, yes, I lost my number. Are there, are there questions, comments? Yes. I have a few hands. Go ahead. Yes. Um, so the problem of obtaining the irreducible representation of compact groups, uh, it's related with uh, quantization of space, basically the problem in physics, yes, so which is so. you know, obtaining, uh, where the action is conservative, conservative action. Now, the question that you are trying to solve, it's very interesting. It's a foundation, basically. You actually pose a very interesting question, which what would happen if the forces are not conservative? So it's a non-conservative action. And you wonder, how can I find the irreducible representation of non compact type of groups to be using somehow a similar techniques, which gets extremely complex. And somehow the consistency um, of, of um, the way of reasoning in, 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 in this um, complex uh, method uh, is actually, you know, it's a question. You said it, that it's actually, it's, it's. Um, so uh, basically, uh, it's very interesting um, as a um, basically showing or leading to the fact that today questions are actually probably behind, uh, beyond the uh, you know, um, way of thinking, deductive way of thinking that uh, mathematics today um, is um, the approach, the approach, the, uh, 
if you wish, axiomatic approach in mathematics that leads to a complex way of thinking which the internal consistency of the method is actually a matter of you know, it's a question. Well, but the, the problem in itself is important in looking at what would be the irreducible part in a non-conservative action, which, you know, looking like, for example, can we discretize matter, for example, non-conservative idea. Uh, so, so I liked it. Secondly, um, th there was the theorem that I put, the constant theorem that was a isomorphism. It's a very old uh, isomorphism with the symmetric uh, space uh, on the algebra, yeah. but it was on the dual algebra. Yes, but, but you know, what happened so is that because of, because of uh, the reductivity, it's a reductive algebra, the killing form. Actually, kind of. Means. So the yes, okay, the okay. Kind of is is a, is, is non-degenerate. Okay. You have the mass, so you get you get you get back to the algebra. Okay. So that maybe that would be one of the reasons. And third, um, I think your idea is very good a way of approaching computing, um, the, in trying to find the generators, which is not you couldn't. You basically produce a very large number of elements of that particular group in finding the generator of the centralizer, which would give you basically uh, the multiplicity of that decomposition. So you have a combinatorics problem. Could and, be. I don't know. We were not successful at actually carrying yes, out Yes, but the, the problem in itself is computing the centralizer, in other words, means finding the multiplicity. I mean, you said that there are so many that actually are equivalent, and yes. you would like to disregard them. So how would you do that? Find the centralizer that will give you the multiplicity of that decomposition, which is your combinatorics. Problem. So oh, well, well, I mean, well, I mean, maybe I misspoke. What I meant to say was that, in in, the, in if you think of an isotopic decomposition, so you you have all those uh, uh, what we will call uh, kind of equivalent. Uh, you know, we get we pile them all together okay. now. So this is what I call a primary component. They are all in the same bag. Right? Right? Okay. Yeah. So this is what we call a primary. So in some sense, so so very quickly. If you let's just take the case of C two. Okay. So if you look at the the the, the trivial representation on C two. Okay. So I, so basically, it decomposes into you know you have you could say well all lines are irreducible representation, okay. right? So. <laughs> So in some sense, there are infinitely many ways you can decompose this, right? Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that, no, what we want to do now is take all the k-dimensional representations, lump them into something. Okay. Just, just put them together as direct sum, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is for one represent, so this is for one representation, okay. right? But are, uh, with the multiplicity, as you said, the multiplicity is, you know, Right there. Oh, but I was referring to something else because just the fact that you compute in the centralizer, the generator of the centralizer, will give you the multiplicity of the irreducible. No, I, I don't think. I no, no, that's not that's not what I said. What I said was that. I know you didn't say that, but I say that that could be also. Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. Okay. What, what I'm saying is that what happened on those primary decomposition on primary pieces, this this the UGK. Uh, will act, the representation will act as just multiplication by scalar. Right. So if you can find that scalar, then in fact you know the representation. And the, so you know how things transform. So that's, 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 okay, that's so what I'm saying. Anyway. That's, that, that's it. Yes. Does, does, does your work suggest any uh, better bound than, you know, you gave Costas there, so he, in a sense he gives you a bound. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. You yeah. Have, a, oh, yeah. have a theorem now that you can say that there's well, yeah. a better bound on the degrees of the generators? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a theorem, that's it. But experience shows that uh, if you were to carry, again, if you were to carry out the algorithms as it is explained in the Bergen paper, uh, and, and ours, ours will, 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 uh, will terminate a lot uh, faster. Now, as I, as I did mention that when I said that, the complexity of, 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 of the algorithms that we have 
is understood uh, kind of uh, is a module of the black box in some sense. So, it's, so, so I don't know. But I don't have a theorem, but uh, if you ask me to bet my life, is that I would say that uh, what we have is a little probably you know, faster than constant uh, because we are able to do far more than what constant algorithm would give in SL3. We are able to do SL5, SP4, E6, e, 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 uh, e no. How did we do E6? But we are able to compute things, compute things that are not, that were not there before. Do you have any sense about minimal number of generators? Or? Well, this is, our, I meant to say that Todo and Steven and I, those are the kind of questions that we are asking ourselves. We are going back to this thing and try to do it really from the root system. Mm -hmm. Because if we are able to work with the because in some sense we have something for the root system of SLM. And that's how we create this, this, this gamma graph that I wrote is basically really it's kind of a coding of the root system. Uh, but uh, as I said, we are heading, we have some problems. Uh, with the algebraic geometry that we need in order to get things going. Now, we are thinking about kind of minimal generators, set of generators that you will need in order to, so that will give you this kind of upper bound that we are talking about, but we, we, we don't have that yet. Have you, have you tried running your algorithm on different algebra systems to see if kind of yours is yeah. optimized for this black box instead of this one? And uh, Todo is taking all that into consideration because he's, he's certainly a very, very gifted programmer. Mm -hmm. And he has developed, so actually he's going to want thing also in his software, because, which is good because he created everything almost from scratch. Yes? Now, the thing, oh, go ahead, Tony, you go first. Go ahead. Um, you said any, the word is any symmetric maker, so that made me think vacuum. No, no, no. So do you <laughs> That's a very good. When we first started, we were, we were yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, some of those generators can show up as perfumes. Yeah, they, they could show up, and, and we did that. And uh, but what happened is that the test form turned out to be so nice. And and, and uh, well, I must say, it's, it's Steven's idea here. Steven said, "Forget about perfume. Let's try to see if we can do everything with, using." Trace form. And then um, he was computing in one area and I was computing in the other. And then he gave me a call. He said, have you done SP4 yet? I said, no, I'm about to. And he said, well, there is, there is a problem. Uh, we, we're under the impression that trace form will generate everything. And then we were, try, we were going to say, if you can find the right representation, right? If you can find the right representation, whatever that may be, then the trace form using the matrices that come out from that representation should generate everything. And uh, for SP4, you know, because K act tristless almost everywhere, so. Yes. Uh, two questions. First, uh, thank you, Alfred, for the talk. Thank you. And uh, I noticed that you do use Macaulay too. Yes. Do you have a second best uh, software system you like? No, I, 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 as, as uh, David just asked, we didn't use any other, uh, other system. Well, the, the other comment I occurred to me was that Macaulay 2 is open source. Yes. So you can get your hands in there and just change anything you want. Oh, have you tried? You can me? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I mean, it, 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 no, I can just. No, no, you, could, you could do that. I agree. But, I can't. Yeah. But, but someone could. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we have done that. We have, oh, yeah. we have done some of that. You have? Yeah, we have done some of that. But the, uh, the documentation is pitiful. I know it is. You're right. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. are you better off working in the innards of Macaulay 2 or just starting all over with something like uh, C++, which Vogan uses? Right. Well, I mean, I was, I was involved also in the Atlas, and I did some programming there, and it's copyrighted to me. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. We're talking to the, so when Foucault Zipro started this project, what, 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 he, well, what he had in mind was to, to work as closely as you can uh, to the operating system, uh, to, 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 to do hardware. And C does that. But more importantly, those guys were doing a lot of linear algebra on, I don't know, on F2, things like that, on you know, finite fields. Well, that's what uh, I was asking. Just a second. So, so this is a very specialized 
piece of software. Macaulay is kind of, you, you can do a lot in it. So it's kind of more general. So, but, but, but the, the piece of software that was designed by Foucault Dupont, which by the way, uh, I kind of extended, and, and, and Van Leuven is, is extending right now, uh, is, is really for representation theory of uh, real groups uh, using, using Vaughan uh, kind of uh, point of view. So even the way we code things, representations are numbered, the Vaughan duality theorem is basically at the basis of things. And so it's a very specialized thing. I would, I, I would say, if, if, but it's not the same as Macaulay. Macaulay is kind of a more uh, flexible type of a system. Well, that's the second thing I was going to mention is that why can't you use two different things? One with symbolic manipulation, like maple, to do the symbolic stuff, and then a real uh, number crunching, Maybe oh, so. maybe you could. I just, I just, I just don't know how to do that because we we <laughs> we are using on some we are using some very esoteric rings. Right? We we are carrying our computation on some very so we need system in which you can actually define a ring by using very few items, and then we get the ring and you just com start computing on it. But it seems almost as if the mathematics is coming down to who's the best computer programmer. Yeah. <laughs> you have this conference this summer to develop an algorithm. Or do you envision the algorithm being implemented in Macaulay too, or oh no, this is busy, no no this is being done in at uh, in France, uh, coding uh, with, from scratch with, more well yeah we in the Atlas program and and the people that are working on it as the names that I have uh, right. so the goal really is to f uh, find a theorem so yeah. what you try to do is to to find out whether or not you can say something about E eight. If you can uh, compute the unitary dual of E8, E8 has a lot of structure in it. And uh, there are a lot of smart people looking at those structures. At least one of them will come with a good idea. <laughs> 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 you know? Now, uh, so, 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 but there are people who do not believe in all this, that business at all. For example, Sir, Paul Salis basically said, stop it. <laughs> it can be done. I, I, I am not qualified, yes, certainly, to tell you where, what's going to happen. I mean, mathematicians have spent all their mathematical career trying to solve those problems. And uh, in some cases, you know, it is what it is. All right. If, if there are any more questions, we can ask them over dinner, beer, snacks, whatever. So thank, let's thank Alfred again. Thank you.